Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. It was a sad and solemn moment of remembrance. Flanked by the other leaders of the EU institutions, European Parliament President Roberta Metzola led a public ceremony to honor the Israeli victims murdered in the attacks by Hamas. Metzola offered Israel the EU's backing, telling the country's ambassador, who was standing next to the presidents, that Europe stands with you. And she unequivocally condemned the Hamas terror. There is no justification for terrorism. Hamas is a terrorist organization. They do not represent the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people. They do not offer solutions. They offer bloodshed. So far, so clear. But the EU's reaction to the Hamas massacres in Israel was muddled and embarrassing at best and incompetent at worst. First, Enlargement Commissioner Oliver Varheli announced that the EU would immediately suspend almost 700 million euros in aid to the Palestinian Authority. Just hours later, Crisis Management Commissioner Yanis Linarchic corrected Varheli by affirming that humanitarian aid would still be flowing. Then, the next day, EU Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell had this to offer. The fact is that at that moment the casualties in Gaza are also increasing. 150,000 people are internally displaced and the humanitarian situation is dire. So we will have to support more, not less, more. You get it? Within 24 hours, the EU went from no money for the Palestinians to less money to finally more money. On top of that, Borrell announced an urgent review of the EU funding programs to make sure no money ends up in the coffers of Hamas. Does that mean Brussels is uncertain whether taxpayers' money hasn't been funneled to Hamas in the past? In any case, there were only two EU countries that cut payments to the Palestinians, at least temporarily, Austria and Germany. The others were willing to keep on with business as usual. Of course, a group of 27 nations cannot be as coherent in its foreign policy as, for instance, the United States. But then, the EU wants to be a serious geopolitical player. So how do we square this circle? Shandor Shios spoke to former Finnish Prime Minister and current presidential candidate Alexander Stupp. Let's talk about the EU's reaction on the Hamas attack on Israel. Some member states quickly suspended development aid and the European Commission also made similar statements. So what should have been done from the European Union side? I think the only weapon that the European Union has at the moment is one of sanctions or development aid. So it has to probably look at all the weapons in its arsenal because, of course, this is an act of war. Uh, Israel has the right to protect itself. But at the same time, it's very important for the European Union to work, work towards de-escalation and make sure that international humanitar humanitarian law is observed. How can we draw the line between punishing Hamas, but at the same time not punishing the whole of the Palestinian society? I think it's very difficult to draw that line, because what Hamas has basically done is attacked Palestine at the same time, in the sense that they know and they knew that there are going to be ramifications of this. This conflict is going to escalate, and now it's pretty much about trying to keep it local rather than expanding it regional. So what we're looking at is, is a cynical way of murdering uh, your brothers and sisters, and also, from Hamas' perspective, uh, the enemy. So I simply cannot understand why this senseless uh, attack was made, unless there are bigger players behind it. After these attacks, the European Union is now understandably aligned with the Israeli position. But many critics say that this will actually limit the future steps that the European diplomacy can make, for example, in terms of securing the rights of the Palestinians. Do you agree? What we're looking is a set of uncontrolled conflicts, which can be local or regional. We've seen it with Russia attacking Ukraine. We now saw it with Hamas uh, attacking Israel. 
it is very important that these types of conflicts don't now spill over to the likes of Sahel uh, or Nagorno-Karabakh again uh, or northern Kosovo. It's good that you mention actually these conflicts around Europe because we have war in Ukraine, we have conflicts between Palestinians and Israelis and we have also a flare-up in the Caucasus. So what does it tell about the future security situation of the European continent? I think Europe is fairly permanently divided. It is going to take about 10 years for the new world order to settle. And of course, you always have three options. One is competition, two is conflict, and the three uh, is cooperation. What I would like to see is competition, but cooperation which prevents the conflict. And I believe that we can contain the situation. Thank you very much. Alexander Stubb, a former prime minister of Finland. The divisions within the 27 EU governments over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a mirror image of feelings and opinions within our European societies. Since the start of the war between Israel and Hamas, supporters of both sides took to the streets and made themselves heard. Demonstrations, rallies and vigils were staged all over Europe, moving the long-running Middle Eastern conflict right to our doorsteps. In France, Britain, Germany and elsewhere, authorities stepped up security measures amid fears that hateful rhetoric could soon become real violence. And as the war between Israel and the Hamas is unlikely to end tomorrow, the hope is that the situation will not get out of control on European streets. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grober. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.